Well, welcome. I am Mr. Murphy, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the second part of Lesson 1.5. Now, in this part, we're going to be looking at how to solve inequalities by graphing. In the first uh, part of this lesson, we learned how to solve equations by graphing. This time, we're looking at inequalities. So let's start by doing a review, though. Let's do this warm-up activity. So why don't you guys go ahead and pause this video. And again, I want you to solve this graphically. Try not to do this algebraically. Um, I want you to solve this using two graphs. So go ahead and, like I said, pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've done it correctly. All right, how did you do? So the first part is an absolute value. So remember the x minus 2 means we're going to move it to the right, or I guess for you guys, be to the right two units. Um, and then the negative out in front means we're going to take and flip it over the x-axis, so it's going to be pointing downwards. And so your graph would be the green one there for the absolute value. And then the minus 3 means that we're going to move it down. So we're going to move it to the right 2 and down 3, but flip it over the x-axis. Um, and then the negative 5 just means we're going to have a horizontal line at y equals negative 5. And we see that we have two points then where they intersect at. So they intersect at x equals 0 and x equals 4. And if you, put, if you tested both of those in the equation, you'd find that both of them would end up with a solution of negative 5 on both sides of the equation. All right. So today, like I said, we're going to be looking at how to solve an inequality. So we're going to, these are going to be one variable inequalities, meaning we're not dealing with an x and a y, just an x. Now, when we look at this first one, it says x squared minus 4 is greater than 0. Now, this can be graphed easily by translating the parent function down 4 units. And so that's what they did there. They took um, x squared, and they just moved it down 4. We've done that. Remember, that's a, this is just a translation. Uh, and then we would have or the fact they're trying to find all the solutions where x is or where x would give us a solution that would be bigger than zero. So where x equals zero would be right along the x-axis. Or I should say where y is zero would be right along the x-axis. We're looking at all the points above that. So the blue part of that graph represents all the points of the graph where the value of the function is positive, where it's greater than zero. Now if it had said less than zero, it would be everything below there. Okay, so the inequality is telling us what part of the graph we're doing, above 0 or below 0. So we're looking for the values for x that are going to be above 0, so it's going to be the blue part of our solution. So the graph is positive from negative infinity to negative 2 and from 2 to infinity, those two parts of the graph. Or we could write this using inequalities, and we could say where x is less than negative 2 and where x is greater than positive 2 would be where our solutions would be. Okay, because those either one of those would identify just those two pieces that are pointing up the blue parts of our graph. Now if it if it had said neg or less than zero, so if it had been the part below there, we would have just had one solution using interval notation saying from negative two to two, and we'd use parentheses because the negative two and two are not included. Same thing with the with this example too, I should have pointed that out. Uh, we're not going to use brackets here at negative 2 and 2 because it's not less than or equal to 0. If it said less than or equal to 0, then those points would have been included and we'd use brackets there. Okay, um, so that's the difference. All right, let's look at this as a story, or let's look at a story problem example here. It says a motorcycle is 40 miles ahead of a car. The motorcycle travels an average rate of speed of 40 miles per hour. The car travels at a rate of 60 miles per hour. When will the car be ahead of the motorcycle? All right, so what do we have here? So we have this first sentence. is going to All that first sentence, or actually the first two sentences there, are talking about a motorcycle. It's, it's starting 40 miles ahead of the car, and it's traveling at a rate of 40 miles per hour. So that equation, or that piece, or that expression, would be 40x plus 40. The 40x representing the number of miles per hour, the plus 40, so I really don't like that this one has two of the same number there. That gets kind of confusing. Uh, but the plus 40 is representing the 40 miles ahead of the other vehicle. Okay, so that's a little tricky there. So the 40 miles per hour is the 40x plus 40. Like if they were starting 20 miles ahead of the other vehicle, it'd be 40x plus 20. Okay, so just to make sure it's clear which 40 is representing what there. Now the second part, where it says a car travels at a rate of 60 miles per hour, well, that'll put here in blue, that would just be 60x. Now, the question is saying, when will the car be ahead of the motorcycle? So where would the car be bigger 
that part be bigger than the motorcycle's distance. Okay, so we want this 40x plus 40, we want that inequality, we want the mouth of that inequality to face the bigger number. So that would be the 60x. So again, we're going to treat this as two separate inequalities. We'd have one, or it's two separate equations. We'd have one that's going to be y equals 40x plus 40. The other one is going to be y equals 60x. We're going to graph both of these separately. And so when you do that, it would look like this. Okay, so the 60x would start at 0 because that has a y-intercept of 0. It has a slope of 60. So we'd go up 60 over 1, up 60 over 1, and so on. The first e expression there, the first equation, 40x plus 40, has a y-intercept of 40 and a slope of 40 over 1. So we go up 40 over 1, up 40 over 1. And so this one, I'd either give you the graph or I'd have you do this on a graphing calculator, or I'd just give you a better graph in general would make it easier to do on your, by hand. But let's identify where the solution is. So again, it's asking us, when will the car be ahead of the motorcycle? And the car, remember, is what's represented there in blue. So if we look at that graph, it appears that the point of the intersection is 2, 120. Meaning, so the x is the uh, number, number of, uh, is the time in hours. So after two hours, both cars would have traveled 120 miles. And after that two hours, that's when the, the car is going to be ahead of the motorcycle. Because remember, the, the car is traveling at 60 miles per hour. The motorcycle is only traveling at 40 miles per hour. So after two hours, they're both going to be at the same location. But then after that, now the car is going to be going faster than the motorcycle. And so it's going to be further distance ahead of the motorcycle. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to use a graph. A calculator would be a lot easier. Uh, to solve each of these inequalities. So again, we're going to be looking to see where are these going to be equal to each other. We're going to be looking, our solution is going to be above or below that line. Okay, so why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've got the correct answer. All right, so let's start with this first one. So again, you're going to graph two of these separately. So we're going to graph each of these as separate equations. So we'd graph y equals zero and then x squared minus, uh, plus 6x plus 5. And the points of intersection there are going to be at negative 4.732 and one point, negative 1.268. That's not what it's asking for. It's asking for when are our values for x going to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, personally, I, I prefer to use interval notation. That's using parentheses and brackets. So above 0, it's going to be those two uh, lines above there. So um, or the two branches there above zero. So we would describe that as going from negative infinity to negative 4.732. We would have a bracket there because that point is included because it's less or greater than or equal to zero. And then the second line, the second part of that line, would start at negative 1. negative 1.268. So we'd have a graph or a bracket there, and then from there it'd go on to infinity. So that would be our answer in interval notation. Or we could just do um, in using inequalities. We could say that where x would be less than or equal to negative 4.732 and x is greater than negative 1.268 are where our answers are going to be greater than or equal to 0. So that's how you would do the first one. Now the second one, you're going to be graphing two linear equations. And so this one, we're trying to figure out so the, the blue graph, or I'm sorry, the purple graph there is um, the x plus 3 graph. Okay, the second line there, the 7 minus 3x, that's what's represented there in green. So we're trying to figure out where is the x plus 3 going to be greater than the 7 minus 3x. So as you look from left to right, the green graph at the beginning there is above the purple graph. But once we get to that intersection, 1, 4, after that, that is when the purple graph is bigger. So in interval notation, we would say from 1 to infinity, from where x is 1 to infinity, is where the purple graph, the x plus 3, is bigger than 7 minus 3x. Or using um, inequalities, we could just say where x is, and by the way, there's a typo there, it should just be x is greater than 1, not greater than or equal to 1. Um, it should just say x is greater than 1. But that would be how you'd write it using an inequality. So hopefully that um, is very clear to you now as far as how you would um, solve inequalities using graphing. But again, some of these times you'll want to use your graphing calculator, and other times you'll be doing it by hand. But I'll make that very clear to you in both the homework and 
um, on a quiz or a test. Okay, good luck now as you work on that homework assignment.